All right, so let's go to Kokunage and put this pattern, this understanding into Kokunage, okay? Uh, first, let me say, I don't do every single technique that the Aikikai tells me to do. Um, it's, I, I, I heard one guy use this phrase, it's pretty good, so I'm just gonna borrow it. There's like, um, a correspondent inflation. Because the way that yin yang manifests itself uh, and it goes on and on and on and on, um, what has happened in Silk Road culture due to, in my opinion, an ego tripartite mind um, surge that happens, always happens. It happens at a social level and it'll happen at an individual level. Um, you get lost in this fucking pairing and pairing and pairing and pairing, and it just goes on for forever. Um, I think O Sensei had correspondence inflation. Uh, it's one reason why I leave the internal terminology so simple. There's yin yang in the Tao. There's Aiki and Kokyu. I don't talk about Pang and Lu and all the different types of Jin. Uh, I don't. I don't talk about that stuff. It's that's just crazy bullshit. It's gonna lose you. So I don't talk about um, the elements too much. I don't talk about uh, the numerology that goes with everything, the directions, all that stuff that O Sensei got lost in, in my opinion, and that many modern Aikidoka who's, who look to O Sensei, they just get lost in that too. Uh, in, in my mind, because that is a byproduct of the ego tripartite mind, ultimately it is all a kind of idolatry, which is the true only sin you can do. Okay. So I don't wanna, get to uh, where I make every technique and I have to do every single technique for every single uh, grab or every single strike. I don't do that. Some techniques, when you do that, they don't make sense and you're just pushing it too much. Uh, you're stretching it. Um, instead, I just work because the Kihon are energetic rituals, I just work within those rituals that describe, or not describe, but manifest more what is trying to be manifested, which is the mystical experience. So, um, many of you have said like, can you do this technique or can you do that technique? And like with hundreds of videos that we have now, you should probably be asking why doesn't he do that technique? Cause that's bullshit. I don't do that technique. Okay. And I have humored a few of you, but I think you should probably question why do you feel the need to have every single technique for every single cue? If these are energetic rituals that are ultimately to be transcended. So likewise, when it comes to Kokunage, I don't do Kokunage at Jodan level, for example, although it is very common to do at Jodan level. I don't do it at Jodan level because you have to uncheck the person in order to check them again, and that makes no martial sense. I think most people do Jodan because it allows them to wind up the arm uh, much more and generate more force. So it's a muscle reliant external force engine uh, that is, doesn't make any martial sense at all. Okay. So I'm going to answer the, the questions on Kokunage from Gedan. But if you want to do it at Jodan, just remember how to transition from Gedan to Jodan and then you do you. In this kind of geometry, I know that I have to utilize the centrifugal 
uh, and centripetal energies of a circle. I know I have to have a constant 90 degree modulation uh, uh, in light of Uke's mass inertia momentum. And so I can't ever adopt this 180 and 180 degree to Uke's mass uh, inertia or momentum, okay? I also know that in order to use the centripetal or centripetal energies, I have to be in the middle of the circle. Okay. So the takeaway from what I just said, the overall pattern must be spiral in nature, and I must not adopt a 180 degree vector to Uke's mass inertia momentum at any time, and I must be in the middle of the circularity of the spiral. Okay. But when you look at most Kokunage, the way it's done, uh, the uke is coming in, let's say from my left to my right, okay, they're coming in. And what the Nage does, who maybe starts somewhere over here, is at best, if you pay attention, if you slow down the video and then go frame by frame, you're going to have the Nage does their Tenkan here. Okay, so if you look at this relationship and you plot it in space, here's the tip of Uke's um, force. I am not generating this circle. I just have two independent points at this, at this point. And the worst part is that this is actually a turn. And what ends up happening is at a certain moment, as I turn in my Tenkan here, my back is actually to Uke, which is not Marshall at all. That is totally wrong, okay? But what the good trained Uke does is they keep coming by and now you've reconciled that Marshall problem which would never be reconciled in real life, okay? So now the, now the Uke is over here, okay? And then you end up accelerating them more this way. The throw happens. You, you send your force this way. And this accelerates the uke, this over here. And then some here, somewhere in here, for some reason, the uke does a forward roll. They go topsy-turvy, okay? But if you look at this shape, there is nothing in here that resembles anything that we just said. And in fact, you're doing the 180 violation. And here's why. For you to accelerate Uke in this direction, which is what you're doing, you're on their 180, and all you're doing is overpowering the inertia to maintain their whatever acceleration they have at that moment. Now you amplify it. So you're just pushing on them. That's all you're doing. If you weren't able to overcome the inertia of their given velocity at that time, you would not be able to throw them at all. You, you wouldn't. And uh, I think anyone has had this experience who's done this version, which is ubiquitous. You've come through the ranks and eventually you got your 200 pound male, you're small, and they're just standing there holding on to you. You can't overcome the resistance of the inertia given within their velocity, so you cannot accelerate them. Or you've had the other experience, especially with new people, is they just walk out of this thing because acceleration does not warrant topsy-turvy. Any, anybody that could meet your accelerated level could keep the line of gravity within their base of support and they would just walk out. He okay, says, so not Marshall in any way. There's no attack on Uke, and there's no reconciliation of attack. I am actually practicing contestation, 
and I haven't used any of the Aikido stuff, and, if, and that's if I get past the back exposure that happens, okay? So we have to change this. And the way we're gonna do it is exactly like we did yesterday with Idimi Nage. So the energy is coming from left to right, Uke is doing this, okay? And I will start the initial spiral rotation by my movement, okay? So anytime that an attacker is coming this way, you will always move at the angles, okay? And what happens in this case is in your own deviation, your own angle deviation, the uke has to course correct to whatever degree. Okay. And so now they just in you moving in essence the target at one of these diagonal angles, they have to course correct to keep the their angle of attack on target. Okay? And that starts the rotation. If there's a huge great deal of force, you'll generally use these two angles. If there's not a huge, great deal of force, you can use these two angles, okay? In the standard Kihon Waza of Kokyu Nage, I'm going to go from here to here, okay? Where I, when, where I step, cannot violate this rule of exposing my back. So we have to pass each other, meaning when, if this is Uke's front, I have to step at a when, where, that when we reach this plane, we reach it at the same time, okay? If I reach it early, earlier than Uke, if I'm here and here's the plane that I want to get to, if I reach that plane earlier, I won't have deviated. They would turn immediately right there. It's now just a new straight line, okay? So if here's that plane where I'm going to meet Uke, I have to meet them here at the exact time that they got there. And then I'm here. And now my back is not exposed, okay? And what I'm using is as I'm traveling there, I'm starting that actual thing that would have been used against me. I want them to reorient themselves. But my angle is too acute and I end up on the side of them with them kind of more coming from this angle. Okay, so they're not totally doing this angle anymore. It kind of looks like this. They kind of go like this. Boom, that was it. That's all I need to start the rotation. Okay. So I'm here now. And when I throw now, I turn within this area. Okay. And as I enter, that spirals out. And here's where the throw happens because I'm in this middle spiral that's ever expanding and the centrifugal energy is now established from where I am and that is what is added to Uke. So I'm not just throwing them and speeding them up here. The centrifugal energy right here of the circle is what's accelerating them out they go. Okay. But that's only one of the three forces that I use in the throw. I want to generate that outward pulling energy. To do that, we can't make this shape. We have to make this shape. A very, very easy way to understand this, if this is your dojo, 
okay? Most people do this technique and all the naga and uke end up and they get their lanes. This is incorrect. If this is my dojo, Uke is not going to go from this side to this side. Uke is going to go from this side to this side. Okay? That, and that causes a problem for a lot of dojo, but you know what? Fuck off. Figure it out. That's how it, that's how it works, okay? I've been in some little dojo, like uh, in Japan, I trained in a, in a dojo that would rent the space of a kindergarten classroom. And... Um, the dojo was so small, and everyone's doing, uh, Tristan, if you don't mind. Like, let's say we're doing yesterday's technique, okay? And they would do it like this. And it's like, it's too fucking small in here. Uh, they, they adopted the technique to the environment. It's like, no, and I was like, I'm not coming here, okay? Um... Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, that's stupid, but that's how people are. People are stupid. That, that dojo was, by, was down the street. It could, it, I could just walk there. You're not learning the art. Walk someplace else. It's that simple, okay? So sometimes here we split the mat in half. Uh, we might turn or something like that. And we look for the, this pattern, that the trajectory of the uke is gonna go this way. Not this way. This is incorrect. Okay. All right. So let me show you what I was talking about just now. Okay. So in our dojo, the ocean is south and the ocean's over there. And then the mountains are north. Awesome Santa Barbara. Okay. So this is west and this is east. So in most dojo, the, uh, the person is going to come from west and then go east. Okay, and then he comes from the other side. Same thing, okay? In terms of trajectory, in, in my trajectory, he's gonna go this way. Okay, if he came from that way, he has to go the other, he has to go this way. Okay? Uh, in terms of most people, let's slow down so I can talk a little. Be smooth. Okay, is it go like here? You see that? And that, go slower please, go back. He comes in, back. You see, and that is not true, that's not correct. Okay. What I want to do instead is meet him. You see, I meet him. So that I have his back. The reason why people have to do the other thing is because they have to accelerate him. So, for example, let's say I don't do it. I get in the back of him. Do you see? And uh, now I try to accelerate him down. Keep it good. I try to accelerate him down. And you can see when I do that, that his inertia of the upright position is now being contested with when I cut down on him, okay? If you now watch this, I, get, I go ahead and I get in the box and I look now for the check unchecked, okay? He's unchecked right now. Still on here. Putting pieces together, okay? If I could get in the back, whoops, come on, okay? And I uh, use uncheck, and then check. Okay, now I want to add the third piece. Uh, I just want out of the technique instead of doing a forward roll, okay? So I'm here, boom. I'm gonna have to do it harder. I'm gonna have to contest more.
There's no way he could, he would have to fall in that. There's just no way. If I could even overpower him, okay? Uh, he's actually stronger than me. Don't let me cut your hand down. I'm not going to be able to do it. Okay? But, if I do the turn in front of him to expose my back, you see? Then I can put his hand further out in front of him, making it easier to accelerate him. Do you see how I'm doing that? It would be no, it's, it's very much akin to this. Because I can step and go forward. But that doesn't really change anything. So let's exaggerate the fact that I turn in front so that I can accelerate more. Again, if he wanted to run out of it, he could. And again, if he wanted to resist, he could right there. Okay? But people are looking for more range, more leg use, so they can do more acceleration. That's, that's not ideal, okay? Part of the problem there is the tenkan. So when they tenkan, they go into this stance. Now I only have six inches of acceleration. This is why every beginner figures out you want me to accelerate, and they will always go like this. They will always step, because they're trying to get more acceleration. They will always turn and they turn, okay? That, again, is all bullshit. So, we have to change the way we think about this technique. He's not going in a straight line. I will not turn in front of him. He's going to do this curvature towards the 90. And the next thing is, I'm not going to do this. I will end up putting my foot right behind the other foot. So that instead of six inches, I have my full base for whatever EDME penetration I need. This will allow me to single pivot point turn. This will allow me to be the circle. And this will allow me to do the second of three elements for the throw, okay? So I know I want to get centrifugal energy. That's one energy of the throw. The other energy is going to be my Edimi angle. As I'm bringing him across, a good good attack the leg. not accelerating him. I'm just going to spin his body in place, okay? So, in, I'm behind, he's going this way. Stay up with me. In and behind, he's going this way. Centrifugal energy. In and behind, my leg goes in. The third element of the throw is the adhesion at the hand to get his elbow okay, to drop. So we know that his body has inertia 
and I don't want to accelerate it against it, but I also don't want to push it down. So he, his inertia is keeping him in place in an erect posture. So what I'm going to do is 90 degrees to it. So I keep doing this with his hand. Keep moving it around. It's no different than when he was down in the Jiminake and he tries to bring his head up. I brought his head forward. I now do it in the hand. Okay? And when you do that, his body's going to go across your leg and you get to use that second force I talked about. So I'm going to go one, two. The adhesion, open your grip. Okay, the adhesion is what's doing it. Don't use his fingers. Don't use his fingers. You're in the palm, moving, shoom, around. You can't do it without the leg uh, sweep, especially for ukes that aren't used to this. You just kind of go a little shallower, but you keep the same pattern. So instead of uh, attacking this leg, boom, there. I just go a little shallower but I do the same pattern. Shallower. Shallower. If you watch my body now, you can see how much I'm turning. If you watch my body now, there's no turn. Turning. Turning. Okay, play with these. Some uh, common mistakes, very, very common in this technique. Um, one is his arm that, gen that originally generated the angle cancellation to generate the zona sanctuary that I turn in. You get rid of it, let his arm straighten again, and just to pull down on his grip. So his arm should never be straight once the technique starts. His arm stays in this position, okay? The second one is, it usually happens because you're not strong enough for the mass that you're uh, resisting. So the uge will come up, you see? And then you take them back down. It's like a little merry-go-round to this thing. Okay, so you're here, then you come up, and then you go. Um, again, you're in the wrong place and you're doing the wrong thing, okay? So he shouldn't come up and then go. You should let him up and he shouldn't make you have to go up 
The only reason the arm is coming up, there's only two, is you're winding up for the for the contest contestation against his his standing inertia, or two, uh, you're not taking it forward and it's overpowering you. Okay, if you're taking it forward, because there is, you are gonna feel that. But when you feel that inertia, as he starts to lift your arm, go ahead and lift it. You keep bringing it forward. Again, that's what I mean when I'm here, he starts to lift his head, you don't want to come up, you just bring it forward, it's easy. That's the 90 degree modulation, okay? So, every, this hand just stays where it's at, it never comes up. It never comes up. His elbow never bent, uh, never strengthened. Even though my arm strengthens, his elbow never strengthens. He never comes up. Okay, try it again. explanation I, I, I presume the answer when I said the phrase you using an Nike adhesion inside the palm okay um, but go back to the gripping video that I made and if we just look at his hand his fingers are closing you see and so that means although his body's coming forward like this as I said in that one video there is a uh, force vector going back that way. Well, if that force vector is going back that way, then the 90 degrees is here. I don't want to go back like this, which you tend to get when you go like that. You see, when I turn in front of you with my back exposed, there's no way that I can't pull on your fingers. There's no way. I have to pull on your fingers. And then the same thing is happening here, okay? His palm is that ledge I talked about that I now want to push upon, you see? And on the, on the bad throw, on the contestation throw. And then his elbow opens, you pay attention, my arm straightens, and now you're pulling on the fingers because the fingers are going that way. And this is why a lot of people that do this, they, the uke can't keep their grip because you're ripping out of it, okay? Or if they're strong enough, they keep their grip. You're like, ah, you're killing my wrist. You're rope burning me. And then you'll see the people with the tape on there. It's usually like older people whose skin splits or women with smaller wrists, or men with smaller wrists are gonna put tape on there. Instead of realizing, I'm pulling on the fingers, that's all that means, okay? So, when you do this, you don't pull on the fingers. The fingers are telling you, there's a wall here, Dave. Don't come back this way. Push instead, push. You see, I'm pushing this way. That is why if he opens his fingers, I'm still making the wrist go. If he closes his fingers, I don't use the fingers to do it. The fingers are telling me, 90 degrees to this place. And when you do that, his elbow goes in. When you don't do that, or you only do it halfway, his arm straightens. You get a little turn here, that's all the elbow you get, do you see? And when you saw my elbow, it's freaking like this, do you see? And now, it's in a lock. It's a lock, it's the lock of Shihonage, okay? And now it affects everything. I took all the slack out of the joints, you see? Now it can be a ledge that I can do things on.
Okay, meaning a ledge in the sense that from there I can control more of his body. Both, yes, externally and internally I'm doing it too. Okay? So, you're going to feel that. You stay inside the grip. How? You can't just do a circle. If you just do a circle, eventually you're going to pull on it. So you have to do the spiral, you see? So there's a downwardness, right? As there is a coming this way, you see? It doesn't just go circle. Then you're gonna pull. It goes down, in, and around. And when I throw, my throw is not made up of the same ego tripartite mind acceleration line. So if you pay attention, I don't really put any oomph into it. So when I come around, I'm just here. My hand does lower towards the mat, but it's because my body lowers. So there again is nothing Oh my hand, okay? Certainly not the same, okay? So, work on this part first, and I think maybe task you with getting his arm here instead of here, okay? Here, there's no zone of sanctuary here. It's just, it's about to form, but it didn't form, okay? You want this totally closed off. And then his body's gonna go around, the centrifugal energy is pulling, you see? Let's go back where I had you, dude. Okay, there we go. He's gonna go around, foot's gonna hit. The centrifugal energy is gonna start doing this. I make sure this leg goes out even more, and I drop, come back. Keep your arm where it is. And I drop, keep your arm where it is. And I drop this part. So he goes like this. Okay? Look how much it did. Oh, in. 